Hi, I'm Rona, and I'm going to talk you through some early postnatal rehab in the first few days after you've had your baby. Depending on whether you've had a vaginal delivery or a cesarean section, you may need to put your focus on different muscles at the start. After a vaginal delivery, it's important that we're allowing the pelvic floor muscles a chance to rest and recover well. We use the RICE principle to make sure that the muscles are healing well. RICE stands for rest, ice, compression and exercises. By rest, we mean lying down whenever you get a chance to do it. In the early days, you're going to spend a lot of time feeding your baby and very often you'll be in a sitting position. This can put extra pressure on the muscle of the stitches down below. Whenever baby's not feeding or you get a chance to rest, in the early days, it's important to lie down as much as you can do. This can help that swelling to settle. For ice, it can be helpful to use ice packs to allow the swelling or the pain to settle down below. We suggest that in their hospital bag, you pack some disposable ice packs. These ice packs can be wrapped in a pillowcase or a muslin cloth and placed down below over the pelvic floor muscles and it gives the muscles a chance to rest and recover and can make it feel a little bit more comfortable in the early days. For compression, there's ways that you can help with the swelling down below. We suggest that you use proper maternity pads that are a little bit thicker to give you some support and make sure in your hospital bag you've packed lots of pairs of proper underwear that give good support down below and come right up over your tummy. For your exercises, we suggest that you start doing pelvic floor exercises from the very beginning. Once your baby is about 24 hours old, or if you have a catheter in, once that's been removed, you can start doing your pelvic floor exercises. What we suggest is as you're lying down, that you start to do some gentle pelvic floor squeezes. Squeeze around the back passage as if you're trying to stop yourself breaking wind and let go. Don't worry if you can't feel much happening at the start, it may need time to build up. You start doing gentle squeeze and release exercises and you build up until you're able to feel that proper squeeze and let go. And once you can feel it, then you see how many can I do in a row. Your goal is the same as in pregnancy. You're trying to do 10 squeezes in a row where you're just holding for one second and then building up to be able to squeeze and try and hold for a few seconds. Ideally, you should be able to do three sets of exercises during the day, 10 one second holds and 10 where you're squeezing and able to hold up to 10 seconds. You may be nervous about going to the toilet for the first time after you've had your baby. For your bladder, it's important to make sure that you're drinking lots of water. When you feel the urge to go, you may be asked to measure the first two times that you empty your bladder. You'll be given a jug and the midwife will explain what you need to do. This is to make sure that your bladder is emptying well. If you're feeling any stinging sensation down below or it's not comfortable, what can be helpful is to take an empty water bottle, fill it with warm water from the tap, make sure it's a bottle that has a squirty lid, and when you're actually peeing, to squirt the water down at the same time. And that can just help to make sure it feels more comfortable. For a bowel movement, it's important to make sure that you're getting into a good position to support the pelvic floor as you're actually emptying your bowels. When you're emptying your bowels, it's important to sit correctly on the toilet. Sit properly onto the loo, lean forward so your arms are resting onto your knees. At home, you can use a step or a stool underneath your feet to elevate your knees off the ground, or else you can just come onto your toes to create that better angle. This allows the pelvic floor muscles to relax and should make it easier for you to go to the toilet. If you're having some discomfort from your stitches, you might find it helpful to support them as you go to the loo. If you take some toilet paper, fold it over into your hand, hold where the stitches are just in front of the back passage as you're actually going to the toilet, this should hopefully make it feel more comfortable. Now I'm going to talk you through your tummy muscles and how they recover after pregnancy. During pregnancy, it's normal for your tummy muscles to stretch and curve around the shape of the baby. What can happen is they stretch to the point where they're separating. This is a normal part of pregnancy, but what we want to make sure is that after baby is born, that these muscles are coming back in together. Now I'm going to show you a simple test that you can do to assess your tummy muscles and their recovery. So you're going to lie on the floor with your knees bent up, 
Taking your fingers, placing them at the belly button so that they're perpendicular to your tummy. Have a feel for the gap that's there between the muscles and also what the tension feels like underneath. And then you're gonna lift your head and shoulders up off the floor as if you were coming into a sit-up, but just stopping short. And again, just have a feel underneath your fingers. What happens to the tension of the muscle? What is the gap like? And look at your tummy and see, is it supporting you as you're moving? Over time, you should find that this is improving. With following along the exercise program, which we'll show you, you should be noticing that this is improving over time. The first exercise that we're gonna do is a very simple tummy exercise, and it's gonna form the basis of all the exercises that we do. Start off lying in this position with your knees bent up, and you're gonna try and get your pelvis first into a neutral position. So you do this just by tilting or rocking your pelvis backwards and forwards, and just gradually making that movement smaller and smaller until you're halfway between the two, and this is what we call our neutral position. You're gonna place your hands onto your tummy so you can feel. So find the bony points of your hips and just move down so your fingertips are resting on the tummy. Starting with the muscle nice and relaxed, take a normal breath in, and then as you're breathing out, you're gonna very gently draw in the lower tummy, imagining like you were zipping up a pair of trousers. Hold for five seconds as you continue to breathe, and then release. To progress this exercise, you're going to start off exactly the same in the same position, nice and relaxed with the tummy, breathing in. As you're breathing out, you're gently drawing in the tummy, and this time you're going to let one knee just drop very gently out to the side, keeping the hand on this hip to make sure it's not lifting, and then nice and controlled, bring the knee back in towards the centre, and then relax the tummy in between. You're going to build up to being able to do this on 10 times each leg. A variation of this exercise is to do a leg slide. So starting off exactly the same position with the same technique, nice and relaxed with the tummy, breathing in, and then as you're breathing out, you're gently engaging the lower tummy, and this time you're gonna let your legs slide down nice and straight, keeping that tummy nice and controlled, and then bending back up again. Same as before, you're gonna build up to being able to do this for 10 times on each leg. Another exercise that you can do as a progression is where you're lying on your side. Firstly, just make sure that you're in a nice straight alignment. You should have your heels, your hips, and your shoulders all in a nice straight line. You're gonna start off exactly the same as we have with the last two exercises by engaging your tummy muscles. So nice and relaxed, normal breath in. As you breathe out, you're gently drawing in the tummy and then keeping the heels together, you're gonna to lift one knee slowly up and then nice and controlled, slowly back down, relaxing the tummy in between. Building up to being able to do 10 in a row. Another progression of these exercises is to move over onto your hands and knees. Same as as we just started, you make sure that you're lined up nice and straight first, your hands should be under your shoulders, knees lined up underneath your hips, and you're gonna do that same tilting movement again with the pelvis, tilting back and forward, and eventually just settling at a point where you're halfway between the two. To start off with, we're gonna find those tummy muscles like we did at the start. So again, you're gonna relax the tummy and take a normal breath in. And then as you're breathing out, you're gently drawing in the lower tummy like you're zipping up the trousers, and you're gonna hold it for five seconds. To progress this exercise then, you can add in some arm or leg movements. So again, start off in the same position, breathing in. And as you breathe out, gently draw in the tummy and just lifting one arm straight up in front, trying to keep that nice control here at the back and slowly lowering down. Let the tummy go in between and build up to being able to do that 10 times on each arm. To progress with the leg movements, same starting position. And this time, as you draw in the tummy, you're gonna lift one leg straight back behind. Again, keeping that nice control here at the tummy muscles, bringing the leg slowly back down let the tummy go in between and building up to be able to repeat this 10 times on each leg. As a further progression, you can do what we call the Superman exercise, which is to be able to lift the opposite arm and the opposite leg at the same time as you're controlling through the tummy. Again, building up nice and slowly, being able to repeat this movement 10 times. It's important to note that on the hands and the knees, it is a harder exercise than the ones on the floor. So it's important that you do these first and gradually build up to these ones. 
You can follow along these exercises to the postnatal exercise sheet. It's a really nice starting point for early exercises to do at home before you build up to doing a postnatal or beginner level Pilates class. Trying to look after your baby with a weak core can be quite a challenge and a lot of women experience pain in the back in their postnatal period because of the challenges of caring for a baby while their tummy muscles and pelvic floor are still weak. You can help to mind yourself by just being aware of your posture as you look after your baby. For instance, it's very tempting to hold your baby leaning back like this. Uh, you can balance them on your chest, it feels convenient, but it's putting a lot of pressure on your back and it's not allowing you to activate your tummy muscles properly and you actually end up stretching them further. So if you can, try and keep your ribs over your pelvis, keep your tummy muscles nicely drawn in and use your arms to hold your baby as much as possible when you're standing. The two main tasks that you have are feeding your baby and changing your baby. And you're gonna be doing this again and again and again. And it can really help if you can do this in good posture. So before you start feeding your baby, try and see if you can find a way of supporting yourself more. So let's have a look at some postures for when you're sitting, feeding your baby, or for when you're changing nappies. So when preparing to feed your baby, always set yourself up as comfortably as possible. Make sure there's a cushion in at your back and sit right back into the chair. And then use as many pillows as you need to bring baby up to breast height. Whether you're breastfeeding or bottle feeding, you want support so that your arm isn't taking the full weight of baby through every feed. If you're bottle feeding, sometimes use this hand and then the next time swap over to the other hand. So you're using different muscles and you're also giving the baby a chance to turn their head to different sides. The other main task that you'll be doing again and again is changing your baby's nappy. And it's really important to mind your back when you're doing that. Using a changing table at home is usually the ideal height for you. In hospital, often people find themselves stooping over the bed. So they're bending over like this and trying to do the nappy change here. And they end up with a sore back afterwards from leaning over. So if you're trying to do it on a lower surface, um, you're better off kneeling down. So if you were at the couch at home, I would kneel down at the couch doing it like that rather than sitting and twisting on the couch. If you're still in hospital, I would use the baby's crib as a changing table um, instead. Um, when you get stooped over like that, or you get caught in awkward positions, your back can sometimes go into a spasm. Um, be painful, you feel like you can't move and you're worried that you might have damaged something. It's important not to panic and I just want to show you a few tips that you can do to help to release out that back spasm. It's happening because your back muscles have suddenly had to work too hard and they're not getting enough support from the tummy muscles. So that's why it's so important to be doing your tummy exercises to give your back support. When a spasm happens, one of the best things you can do is to lie down with your knees bent and do some pelvic tilts like we showed you in your exercises. The other thing that you can do is to use heat on the area. So get a hot pack and put it onto the back for 15 minutes a few times a day. Um, doing the exercises though can be really helpful for just letting go of that spasm. It wakes up the tummy muscles so they'll support the back instead and stretches out the back muscles so they let go.